Join me today as I create my version of academia decor in the music room. Welcome to an episode of Life with Marianne and Joe. Thanks for stopping by today. So in today's episode, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be creating my version of academia decor in the music room. So what does academia decor mean? Well, it has varying meanings, but generally speaking, it's what you think of when you think of like um, a, a college library or a den or a professor's office or a creator, a musician, an artist or somebody like that. Uh, a moody, uh, mostly dark kind of room uh, that has a lot of accessories. It's not minimalist by far, it's more on the maximalist end. A lot of paintings, a lot of books, a lot of instruments, a lot of things that uh, will uh, inspire the creative juices. So I hesitated a little bit in saying academia decor because people are going to start saying, that's not academia, that's, that's wrong, you're doing it wrong. But again, if, if this is my version of it, and since it's my house, I can do what I want to do. But it does have an academia flair to it. Now, a lot of people think that when you do academia decor, you have to paint your room black navy blue or hunter green or plum you know those kind of colors and yes you do see that a lot but i don't want that because it's dark enough here you know through the winter without having a room that's almost black and i want to go in there and be depressed so i am taking the idea of that academia now there's there's a lot of videos on youtube about it there's the dark academia and then there's the light academia light academia i guess i'm leaning more towards that than the dark but i'm trying to create a moody vibe in that room okay i don't mean to talk so much but i need to give you know some background on all of the you know what's inspiring me you know like in the 90s when i i used to be at the at the beach house and my mother would be watching Christopher Christopher Lowell you ever hear of him I used to be you know in the background I would hear him saying that you want a room to create a mystery you want a room that makes somebody want to come into it and then look around and stay in it not just run away so what happened is when we had the uh, baby grand piano brought into that room it immediately made a room that people are like oh you have a piano and then they turn and they go into that room I know I would when I go to somebody's house and I say piano that's the first thing I go over and take a look at the piano so already that creates a sense of I want to go in there and I want to see that now how do you keep people interested once they're in there and a lot of times it's by accessories if you only had the piano in the room and nothing else you know it's like okay there's a piano in there and I'm gonna leave and that's fine if that's what you're gonna do if you have the right kind of room for it you know then it's great but my room is not like that so what I wanted to do is I, I kept thinking what can I do to create interest in there what can I do when that room used to be our former living room I transformed that into so many different things and I used to over decorate in there especially for the holidays because guess what we very rarely went in that room but now since the piano is in that room I go in there almost every day because I'm trying to teach myself how to play and I, I'm in there all the time so I wanted to feel a little bit more you know I don't know uh, in accordance with the rest of the house. I hope I'm not rambling. I I'm hope I'm making sense to you. So, um, like I said, what I want to do is I'm going to use things that I have. I'm not going out and buying anything for this. If I like this, and if Marianne likes this, and I stumble on pieces that would be appropriate for that room, that's when I'll go ahead and buy pieces. But as for right now, I'm going to search in my stash. I'm going up into the attic and I'm going to look around and see what I can put together to make my version of academia decor. Please don't blast me in the comments. It's just my version. Okay, thanks. Okay, Hope so you enjoy this. like always, I'm going to use things that I have because I change things up so much. I really hate to go out 
and spend money on something and then I'm not gonna use it. So, you know, initially what I'll do is I try to do with what I have, I'm always on a budget, that's um, what I'm thinking, and um, create from there. So if you've been following me, you know I said I'm not doing anything on the mantle for spring and for Easter, and that holds true. I am not doing something for spring and Easter, but I am going, going to create something on this mantle that uh, will try to fit into the theme that I'm, you know, like forcing this into. Now, like I said, it's, it's not exactly what you would see if you would look up academia, dark academia or light academia. It, it's, you know, moody maybe, yes, but um, I want it to look creative because it's a room with musical instruments and it is a creative room. And to be dead honest with you, it actually took me almost two days to figure out this mantle. So I did create it and then I took it apart so that I can show you the pieces of it. So let's get started with it. Now, what I wanted to do is I want to create, if you look in a lot of those uh, academia things, they have a lot, a lot of artwork and layers of things. So around this mirror, which I'm not moving because I like it above the fireplace, um, I'm going to put three pictures in front of Though this is not a library it is a room that is and sparks imagination because it is a room that the you know that I will come in here to practice the piano and to play and sometimes I sit in here and I dream of things to do and what better way to dream uh, it without using books I mean you know books are things that dreams are made of so what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate some books on the mantle. And again, that's a very big part of this whole academia kind of theme. Academics, right? Books. So I'm going to put these books right here. And I chose black. I have one that's a little bit burgundy, but gonna have to do because I use my black books in the wall unit in the uh, family room. And on top of this book, I'm going to put the lamp, okay? And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Let me get them. So here, I'm going to put two more books upright like this. I'm keeping it symmetrical because you see the room is very symmetrical with the, with the artwork I have on the walls. And two more books this way, and then the lamp. If I can get the scoop of cord. The lamp right there. Okay, and on the books, I'm going to use these two French horns, which I have, and I'm go going to try to set them up to make them look like they're bookends, kind of. I'm gonna put them like that. Then on each end, I'm gonna put some wrought iron candle holders with candles. And I want to use, uh, I have gold candles, I found one, and I don't know what I did with the other one. I, I, I think I dropped it, maybe it broke, and I don't remember, because I can't remember anything anymore. But I have the, this, like this wrought iron black, and I think it'll tie that black in. And I'm gonna put one. All right, so in that corner over there, I'm gonna use one of these ficus trees. And I know some people think that they're tacky because they're a silk fi uh, ficus plant, but I keep them clean. I have a uh, silk a flower spray that I spray these, and it gets all the dust off them. I would love to have a real ficus plant there. I've had many, I've killed many, many of them, and I don't want to kill any more, and they're a mess. They make leaves all over the place. They're one of the most difficult plants for me, for some reason, to grow. 
So I'm going to use this. It creates a little bit of texture and a little bit of depth in that corner. So I'm gonna put this over here and I think what it does is it plays off nicely with the wall art and with the leather chair. So I, I kind of like that I right there. I'm tying to the wrought iron candle holders that I have on the mantle. I'm going to use this right here. This is about three feet tall. Again, it's that wrought iron look and it's the black and I'm going to put it right here. Okay, just right there. And then, at the base of that, I'm going to, excuse me, use the fireplace poker brush and the that I forgot the name of right now. Uh, so let me move the camera down so you can see that. Okay, so that's right there in that corner. Just have to adjust this one. All right, so on that chair, I'm gonna use this shawl actually it has kind of it's like a faux leopard kind of a print but it has a very deep chocolate that's almost black and it has a lighter brown and i just have to fix it which i'm going to do off camera because you don't want to see that well good thing i didn't video that that took about five minutes to do okay so i'm going to put two pillows on that chair and i'm going to use this black sequin pillow i know it's not so academic looking, but it's a little bit glam, right? But whatever, it's what I have, and I do like it. So I'm putting it here, because it's my house. So I can do whatever I want, right? Okay, and there's that pillow. And I'm going to use this velvet gold pillow. Okay, so I'm gonna put those two pillows right there. and. The window treatments have like a gold look to them. Uh, they're, they're really nice, I forgot where I got them, uh, but they're, they're very heavy, they're very thick, and um, uh, they, they go well with this whole color. And on this chair right here, I'm just simply going to put uh, one of the gold pillows here. Okay. Now up on that sconce, I put a French horn, and it does have a candle in it. And then down on this table, for now, right now, I don't know when you're looking at this video, but it's just about Easter time. So I am adding a little touch of Easter in here. I'm going to put this black urn right here. And I took these, um, those really cheap eggs from the Dollar Tree, um, and I painted the top purple. And for those of you who know me, I just did redid my grandmother's chairs and they're right outside in the foyer and they have a back backing of purple and then I this did this side with gold and black to mimic the area rug and then I just put some uh, Dollar Tree um, stickum sequins with little pearls here to cover that line that's in between and one there to cover that hole that's in the top so I put those in here now I like to put things of three so I'm using that same theme that the bar is in here. So I'm putting this right here. This is a um, tray, a black tray, and I'm using these cordial glasses with the beautiful gold edge right here. All right, in the curio cabinet in this corner, I used these two large candle holders that I made from uh, my mother and father's lamp. I took it apart and I used the top part and the bottom part to make two candle holders and this giant, uh, gi uh, what do you call it, brandy sniffer. And it has the, um, I put some of those eggs in there. So that's what I did on the top. Then down here on the first shelf, right here, I have a picture that my grandmother brought from Italy. Now, for those of you that know me, you know I talk about my grandmother a lot. That's my maternal grandmother because um, she lived until she was 94 years old and I was well into my 30s when she passed away. So I lived my life with her. We lived in a two family. I lived upstairs from her. So all my stories about my grandmother is 
her. My paternal grandfather, um, they, were all, they also came from Italy, but she p died when I was five years old. So I only have like a very dim remembrance of her. And in fact, this is the only piece that I have from her. She hid this coming over on the boat from Italy, and it means a tremendous amount to me, this uh, picture right here. So that is from my paternal uh, grandmother. And then I have the, the book back there, those who are a uh, book about cherubs, and then the Blessed Mother in the front. Now these two pieces right here, these two elves, these are hand-carved elves, which were my parents got them when they built the first beach house that we had in 1968. And my mother did the house all in blues and greens. And uh, you see one of them is a deep blue and the other one is green. One has a harp and the other one has a flute. And behind that, I framed sheet music to Always and Forever, which is Marianne and my wedding song. That's the song we first danced to. And then down here, I have a, for that crystal, and to raise it, I have a crystal uh, plate dish, but I have a gold urn. Okay, and I hate that plug right there. So what I'm doing is someone gave us a guitar when they saw the music room and I'm putting the guitar there because it hides somewhat that plug. And at this corner of the piano, I'm going to put Mozart because in these types of rooms, there are a lot of busts that uh, people use. And I know um, when I first did the music room, Again, I got, for some reason, I got a lot of criticism about this head, uh, but again, I think it's very appropriate and it goes with the theme. So he is going to go right here on the piano to serve as inspiration for me to keep practicing because I'm not, I've been laying off too much. Oh, and P.S. I am looking for um, a pad for the bench uh, probably a black leather. I'm probably gonna have to sew it. I found the fabric that I want, so I just have to take the time to do it because yeah, I do sew, believe it or not. All right, so over on this side, I've moved this um, bar area from the library to here. It's been in the library a long time and I thought it was more appropriate in here uh, to give it more of that loungy, um, you know, uh, area where, uh, you know, people are creating and they might need a drink to get through, <laughs> to get through whatever they're getting through. So anyway, I'm going to try to style this a little bit. So right above it on this side, I have this uh, pencil drawing again of, uh, of uh, cello. And I like the starkness of the pencil sketches rather than a lot of color. Um, I'm, not that I, you know, I don't want to infuse a little bit of color in here, but I'm trying to keep it more on a moody, you know, like we've been saying, a little bit moody, and I think this creates that. So I've actually put this up here, and what it's supposed to look like is I drew this, and I, uh, I actually, I decoupaged uh, pages of music onto here, and then I ripped them off, and I scraped them off with a spackle uh, scraper, and um, I painted and then I took it off and then um, I you know, used pencil and I drew in. So it's supposed to look like um, a picture that is in the process of being worked on. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's, it's way not done. It's just uh, you know, going to be worked on. And I thought that it gave the right vibe in here. Um, I'm sure Marianne is gonna absolutely hate this when she sees it, uh, but as for right now, I'm going to, I'm going to see how it feels for me. Over here, I'm going to add a book, uh, a black book. So here's the book, and I've added this lamp on here. For those of you who know me, you know that this is my mother's lamp. And uh, it used to be, um, it had this crazy big shade on everything. I part it down. I added crystals onto it. It used to have orange crystals. And I also toned it down. It was a much brighter gold. So I think right there, that'll look pretty good. 
So down at this end, I'm using this beautiful gold urn, again, that I've toned down. I painted it black, and then I just brushed some gold on it. And because it is spring, I'm using some forsythia in here, even though that's not typical of this kind of decor. Next, I added in this urn right here with that beautiful rope detail on it. This decanter and this bottle right here. I like the coloring in there. That's why it's actually there. And I added a candle right there. So it kind of gives a, a more like, um, I don't know, to me, it looks like a sophisticated vibe. Um, I don't know what you think. I'm sure I'm, sure I'm going to get criticized for it. But um, anyway, it's working for me right now in what I have. Most likely, I would say 100% likely that that picture is probably going to be altered back there because like I said, Marion's probably going to hate it. But I actually kind of like it. I think it gives a very um, an art, artsy kind of feeling. You can see the girl is not done in the back. I just penciled her in and so on. Okay, so that's this piece right here.